Whether you realize it or not, our ears are treated to these sounds every day, every 15 minutes. Very few people play it. Uh, very few people know that it is being played by a person. Mark Canuco's ears hear the sounds of the carillon a little differently. So it's a much different sound. My favorite part about playing the carillon is that I really like the sound of the bells. I really like what you can do with the sound and the mixture of bells playing different periods of music. The official carillonure of Marquette University knows his composers and history like the most avid sports fans. So that's a piece by Gary White, um, contemporary composer, born in 1964. Same year that the instrument was built. Marquette Hall was built in 1923, but the tower was empty and silent for over four decades when a donation from Mrs. John Dwan purchased the 48 bells. The smallest weighs 24 pounds, the largest, 5,000. But carillons weren't always so big. History of carillons really started in the Netherlands. Um, you know, you would have a tower with two or three bells and then I'm building a tower or something, oh, I'm gonna see if I can outdo him and I'll put in five, six bells. And that's how the instrument grew. The instrument, first created in the 1500s, increased in size, and so did Mark's interest when his professor at the University of Chicago gave his ears a sample of that carillon. And when he finished playing, I was totally transfixed. I love the sound of the instrument. You actually play the batons with your fists. It looks like I'm pounding it, but it's really a very light touch making contact with a baton and then kind of bouncing off. But Marquette's carillon has had anything but an easy pass. When I arrived, you know, 20 some years ago, uh, the instrument was in quite a state of disrepair. And the university in its wisdom decided that they would go after really funding and fixing the instrument. The bells of the carillon, just one of three in Wisconsin, were actually cast in bronze more than 3,500 miles away. They cast the bells in France and brought them over on the Queen Mary and came through the canal and brought them to the port of Milwaukee. Now they're just on the other side of Mark's office. History is just a fist or foot away for him and always with an earshot for the rest of us. I'm Timothy Latote, Mark at Wire News.